ladies and gentlemen, looking at the uh, this image. This is from Fig Engineering uh, Submittal Photography. This image specifically is the date on it. It's time stamped March 8th, March 8th, 2018. This is two days before the move. Two days before the move. With that said, as you look at a couple of things, the crack here plus in the background, the support of the structure appears to be back here at the diaphragm. Pretty pretty different loading. And that black mark that I spoke of earlier, I'm not sure if that's there, if this is it still, uh, or if this is the same one. <clears throat> Moving on. You could take note of the bolts, the location, and how they look conditioned before the move. Including these, uh, you know, grout-looking grout maybe on top of it. All right, back to this image. What do we notice? Take a look at the crack. This is before the bridge was moved. It's still in the staging area, right here. Look at that crack off of this white pipe going there. Yep, yep. That is after they detentioned on three twelve. After they detentioned on 312, right here. They detentioned on 310. Look at it now. That is the same crack path. So if you want to know what was going with, on with the structure, you go back to 3 um, before the move, and we see that, that crack was uh, that pad, that crack was already present. That break, that break was already present. This is not a surface crack. This is that deep crack there. This implies, or, or backs up, this little bit of a crack tells the story of the bridge sagging already. That little bit of a crack there, because we know when we look at the photographs from the OSHA report, we see the that this is elevated, not sinking down as uh, NTSB would tell you, and also that the OSHA report would tell you that this is, this, this is a, a push-off from number 11 and 12. Well, I just showed you the crack was present, before the bridge was moved. So how is this a push off from number 11 and 12, the shear face, interface, shear face stuff? How is that there? This is with tension in place still. So the bridge is tension now. Post tension it is number two and in number 11 at this point. We have this crack. The structure, if that's, if this, this is the crack that's here that we have in the, uh, on, the, on the days after. So this shows that that crack, was, that failure was already present, and when they detensioned, that the forces that were that was acting as an anchor back there, number eleven and number twelve. If you picture it as a whole now, the whole structure, it it's holding it back. It's the tie back. It's like these are the uprights. Think of as okay. I think I can do this. <clears throat> think of this as an upright, and this along the this is the anchor point. And, okay, I have a better idea. Pausing video. So what I'm bringing your attention to is tie-back truss bridges. They don't use abutments to hold them. They're, the forces are, are interlocked inside themselves. This tries to push out, it's locked here. So if it tries to push out, it's got to put tension on this bottom member, which is also intention we know that and so think of that as a uh, tie back bridge now going to which one will I pick um, well it'll be in TSP so going over to here this system is just if you remove this section here for a second but you need it because it's got the post tensioning in it to hold the top of the of the uh, so think of this as the I-beam at this point think of it as that now this uh, this to keep this back from breaking the top from breaking this this uh, post tensioning does that across the top and the anchor point happens to be further out so don't think of this as the this just happens to be an extension of the anchor point that could have been here tying it in on each end for the can for the for the uh, canopy which would be the top cord if you will now and also you can think of it as the I beam that way also that the forces here go up they come across the top. And here's the continuation. They go across here and back down again, tying across the bottom. And that's also in post tension, keeping it from sagging. It's uh, longitudinal post tension. So this would be the tie back section of it. 
So what happens if you release the, the ends of a tieback bridge? Yeah, you know, well, this I think what would happen is what we're looking at. So if we close, chop this off and chop this off, that is detention them. Um, they no longer have the anchoring point here. So it, what happens is you've got to redirect. And I already talked about that redirect, but the in other videos, maybe I'll, I'll gleam it again. So these forces go over to here, pushing out to here, and they and they come back. It's t it's it's locking in from from kicking out. So if I were to cut this, in theory, this would create a, this would this wouldn't hold up now. It would no longer if I were to just cut this member here between the two joints, um, the connections then this bridge would collapse, and it would collapse down this side. Now, the uh, in this case, they removed detention both both ends, so most of the forces were going across the, the bottom of this. And as Denny Page stated, he thought it was redundant because he thought the truss system was, was odd because the trunk truss system is redundant to the uh, deck system. But that's contrary to what Linda Fig stated, that everything's in compression. Because you just try to call it, you try to double dip. Now you're calling it a truss system, but you just said everything was in compression. And truss systems, not everything is in compression. Just to help you guys out real fast, you can look at this, and I can tell you this is the tension member. Tension, tension. Tension member is the design of it. Uh, tension member. See the, see the holes in it? Just with not even using any, uh, you know, mechanical engineering or anything else. I just quickly know that this is the tension member. They don't build compressive members. And this will have some compressive forces in it as it goes through, as you come across here. But they don't build compressive members uh, with hollows like this. So this would be your compressive members, um, just to give you an idea. And here we go again. That's a fast gleam of it. I haven't found one yet where a compressive member was built in a hollow, hollow capacity like that. It's a lot more tricky when, when they don't do it hollow. Then you got to look. Then I then I usually can look at the build. And figure out the intent real quick. The, uh, the smaller members are usually the tension members. And remember, it, loads will transfer; they'll, they'll cycle. But uh, the intent, the, the larger, the larger members will be the compressive members, and the smaller members can be tension. The older bridges, it's the type of steel they use that can be compressive and tension because they'll, they'll be scaled the same mostly. So then that's going to be a different deal of whether using uh, um, wrought iron and cast iron even um, that they use compressive and tension members different different steels back to this so don't don't 100 percent lock yourself in with the uh, open um if you're looking at there you know that, that's that, see how open that is that would be a tension member um if, if that was compressive i would i'd eat my hat as you would say because there's nothing to give it bracing this would buckle if it had strictly forces of compression on it now go um, back to this. These were all designed to be in compression. So how is Denny Pate trying to now double dip, saying it's redundant, that the truss system is redundant to the deck system when they call it an I-beam and they all said everything's in compression. So I don't, I don't, I don't see him double dipping on that and getting away with it. My my feelings of that. I didn't dive into it too deeply, but the uh, again. So if you remove these two ends, I think you just lost your tie back. It was anchored there, sharing the loads there. That makes more forces of the canopy want to creep down. But we have a report in the uh, in the uh, NTSB that says the sagging was talked about. And he said, pretty much, don't worry about it, the engineer. It's okay. Saying it's okay. But I state it's, it's not okay. That this the sagging in the middle is indicating of this, which once you detention 2 and 11, you end up with okay. That's someone else I'm helping out in the vehicle. You end up with uh, great. Oh, okay. Let's get to this one. You end up with where, where did it go? That's kind of rude of me not to stay on that for you. Um, I guess it's just going to be rude because I can't find the the after that. I mean, it should have. I thought I had it lined up. Um, so again, this is this chamfer. I gave this. Remember, I said in a previous video that I think the chamfer was at it last after they did this. I think I, I stand on that now again because I saw some form work 
and in the form work, I'm up to page, oh, I read this whole report. Um, so the, uh, the form work, oh, I read the other report. I read a, a different report. I didn't I only made it to 74 in this one. I've not finished, a, finished this one. So the form work, let's see, stop at page 74 on this one, I think. But let's go to the form work here. They don't show it there, but that chamfer is not at it. It's after the fact. Look at this member here. They all have chamfers. But you see this this wood forming goes all the way straight down. We don't see it here because it's out of image, but this one it goes all the way straight down. I found it in the other ones too. They just go straight down. So all the chamfers, which were supposed to be engineered integral, not not as afterthought added on as a pimple, um, they're not working. They're not able to work effectively. Uh, even the chamfer up here, these things are meeting at a, at a uh, it's kind of odd. They're meeting at a, a sharp angle. But some of them are supposed to meet flat, and I'm trying to find. Um, flat. So this chamfer here is a pimple. It's added on after they did the column. Uh, I've got verification per these per these uh, form work that I see in, in these images. So this was added on afterwards. So how do you get this break? Not through shearing or sliding. There's no sliding going on at this point. This is from the deck creeping down, and a, a significant amount of creep down. And why after the move? Well, they did have some uh, um, reports of two days later of this torsion going on, which I talked about the torsion, and that you don't get to do that for free. But apparently, it just torques right here and tapers off to there. I find that ridiculous in this uh, computer model. That why would it twist at the base? How does it magically twist at the base? The top has to be twisting. Well, I, they limited it to this because they don't want to, I think, this, this report doesn't want to show where the source of the twisting would come from, the, the further in out. The ratcheting end would be out here. They're not showing it down here. They're not showing the deck tw twisting. So this tapers off to the very top of the canopy. And look on this side of it. That's that crack, isn't it? On the other side, that would be the crack identifying itself. If you torque the deck this way, it appears you get a torsion that way. Now, I don't know their models if they added the post-tensioning bars back in here because they're, they're, they're real freaky about removing the post-tension bars when they're doing these models. And these models are not designed. There appear, appears that uh, I stated theoretically that they should be able to sue them, the, uh, the modeling company, you know, the, the, the software company. But the software company, I'm diving into this. No, I don't think they have a software that does this from A to B that you can put everything into the software. The post tensioning, the transverse post tensioning, the longitudinal post tensioning, that there is no software to do it. So they're extrapolating, they're putting together pieces and doing it, some of them manually and saying, well, this would work this way. So this FE, uh, their, uh, their computer models are, uh, are, I think, lacking. It's just junk. It, you're only sampling part of what it would do, but not really, in truth, what would, would really happen. With you add post tensioning to it, I don't. You know they're not showing what's happening in the rods or anything in that one image, so I find that lacking. Their testing they did. This is how they did their interface shear test, if you will. They made a one piece uh, diagonally cut with, I guess, reinforcement in it, and or not, just compressed it, and this is what they determined that non roughen you get this, and of course we don't see the surface in here of non roughen. Um, they show this as their pieces. See the pieces here? But the and then they show a theoretical one here. Supposedly this is what they did. This is the non roughing which which I can't tell what's going on here. Is that smooth or not? Um, or is that roughened to a degree? But they show there's a reinforcement. And I don't know what they're showing um, when they show this this slash quoting Failure, it's the shear action that's going on here. What 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 do they pick at the uh, the movement point? They don't say. They just give you these. This is the answer. Here's your answer. But they don't say what do they consider what do they consider movement? What here's the testing leads. What do they consider movement? What's considered movement? Um, you can stack the deck. There's a statin drug to stack the deck. For example, percentages and all that. I don't. I hate percentages. I totally hate these percentages. I just want to see the numbers. Forget the percentages unless I'm trying to con you. Um, statin drugs, if anybody takes them, they did a test. They did a group of 100 and 100, 
and out of each group, one took the statin, one did not, and the group that did not take the statins um, had two heart attacks. The group that had the statin drugs had one heart attack. The moment that it came to the came to that percentages, they quickly stopped the testing, and then they said statin drugs have the fifty percent chance of saving you from heart attack. Is what they made the report on. You can find the statin that testing. I'm not making it up. And they now that's why everybody's on these statin drugs based on that stupid um, of uh, one person having a heart attack out of two on those two studies. Clearly, uh, they, they didn't let their study run long either. But as soon as it got to that, they said, up oh, 50%, we'll take it. And they cut the studies. Uh, and so now that's why everybody can tell you, you have a 50% chance of not having a heart attack if you take statins. Leaving out per the test, um, per that test. So percentages are, 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 are not so way of talking to you to, to scam you, to make you believe something. Um, so this is before post-tensioning ride. This is that one image we don't have access to. Here's the, the uh, stirrup, and they don't, they, I don't know what this is, this going over to here. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. There's a stockpile of material here. But I see that this stirrup, I'm going to tell you that this stirrup is in place. There's the other side of it right here. This little mark they're pulling out is right there. When we see the NTSB and OSU reports, they've cut this even. Why would they cut it? Because it would interfere with their narrative of sliding and it had to explain it. There is no reason to cut this. I see no reason to cut this reinforcement. And they call it fell rebar. Look at the shadows. Look down here at the shadow. Here's the shadow. This goes up. There's a continuation right there behind their little box they're hiding. And there it goes around, and there it comes back down, right about to there, terminating there. This, I don't know what this little scam thing is. Here's a, here's a piece of metal lying here. on the, lying here. I don't know where they got it from or what their little scam is about. Um, maybe it's from here. Maybe not. But this stirrup is in, is in good standing. Look at it. It's not even deformed. It looks like it's in good standing as far as its shape, based on the shadow and the parallel parallelity of the two of these bars and per shadow so in the NTSB and OSHA report they hide this they, they they jump us away from that where we don't get to see it so we go to the NTS report NT uh, this is the OSHA report and there's a cracks like hell that's the uh, that and they said they couldn't figure out here's the area cracks again there they are so this crack lines up with with days before this crack this is on again for anybody trying to figure it out. Here's, this is way before the move on the 8th. This crack is presented. The, that post tensing is already active. It's in there. And now here's the crack after they detension. So clearly the two are related and they can't see their own structure for whatever reason, you know. Let's talk about engineering and, and, um, and engineers are scared to sp speak up. You saw how I spoke up in that one uh, when I went to the I took you guys on the bridge tour. The uh, I spoke up about the cracks and the engineer, the the uh, actual the structural engineer that did the did that bridge, and the other guy that did the actual the works for the company did the actual. He's the engineer in the, on the site who did the actual um, fitting of the materials. They both looked at me with the palest face and scared, like whoa, bro, eyes popped up, and I said, oh, "Forget it, forget I ever asked," you know, because. Part of my uh, part of our uh, part of the uh, continuing ed is that we don't put anything in written form that we observe that's wrong. <laughs> really, we have that. We have that a signed paper. We have to sign. It says that we will not put in written form anything that we observe that is that we see that to be of an issue. So you can see how this that how, why would you not want that in written form to be addressed? They do not want to. Clearly, you see the intent. And you saw there were about 40 of us engineers there, and uh, and um, none of them spoke up about the cracks either. A couple of them came up to me going, yeah, I, I saw them after you pointed them out. Where are they from? And he asked me, and I was like, really? I just uh, I just blew them off. I'm still evaluating those cracks, believe it or not. Uh, it's meaning I'm still working on it, not believe it or not. Because um, you guys obviously believe that I would still be evaluating it. And, and this... They call it, uh, whatever, it, it, this lift up. So li li there's the crack on the opposite opposing side. 
So now this, their determination are these cracks are from interface shear. These cracks are from inter interface shear that is pushing away. The clamp force was already present. So they'd have to be stating that this was happening, this happened before, not after they tensioned. So this failure happened before. But I'm stating it happened because the bridge was already sagging. And we have that in the reports. It was sagging. And I, I showed you that in the report. I, it's probably going to take me a moment to find it. Here's the elevation. This is what they con consider that it's fell down. It sheared. It sheared. It pushed it off. That Number 11 pushed 12 off and down. And even though it's crippled like it is. It's structurally crippled. That it has the ability to do that. But yet when it pushes it off, the, the 8,000, oh, no, I did a remath on it. It's probably about close to 10,000 pounds, right? Because it's 2 foot 10 inches. I, I had it 2 by 2. I think it's 2 by 10. So it's close to 10,000 pounds. It turns out when you release 10,000 pounds from a structure, the diaphragm, that since it's only 10,000 pounds, it has to be 10,244 pounds and 3 ounces. Then it would fall down to the, uh, the pier. And you guys know how I talk, so don't be triggered. I'm being facetious. No, actually, uh, so when you push 10,000 pounds off, it actually floats. It goes up in the air, as you can see here. Here's the bottom deck, and it floats upwards. Um, so because it's only 10,000, it didn't meet the 203 ounces. Then, then weight does concrete then doesn't float anymore. Uh, yeah, that's the way I talk in real life, too. Uh, I'm very, I, I say it straight face to people, too. Um, so, no, that, this is going up. Hot, it only can go up. It can only go up by the whole structure so that's page um 56 the entire the entire structure um sagging down so if i would if i would have released this and they did release it the post tension here but not fully it had a nut in it if i would have released the two ends which they did do the weight of this bridge would 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 cow down in the middle right that's the dead load is pretty much resolve itself somewhere about the middle and as it pulled down, because all these are interconnected with the canopy, as it pulled down, it would have the effect of pulling this up. And that's why we see it elevated here. This whole section is broken free, but not at this time. It broke free in the staging area on the 8th, as, you, as I showed. And as this cows down, this has the effect of pulling this up. And this cantilever action is from here. So in fact, I could argue that the canopy is probably got a flexural point there somewhere. But out here, this 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 um, this uh, overhang from this point to here, I'm gonna call it from from this nodal area to here, because it's no longer really connected. It's not pushing down, so it's an overhang capacity. It's so strong, the strong back of it is so strong. Even when it pulls it down, it's able to lift this up. This ten thousand plus its own weight, the 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 uh, the, uh, the cantilever from this. Plus, keep this in mind. The post tensioning is what keeps it so taut, they're able to lift up, not the concrete. I don't think it would have the ability to do that. If I think about it, though, I probably could if I looked at the rebar and counted off all the PSI and and the and the and the well and the interaction between it. You probably be you, obviously it works. It pulls up. What's the effect of that post tensioning being pulled down? Because this is longitudinal post tension times two. Yeah, C one and C two. Um, so it's times two. What's the effect? It changes the profile of this post tensioning um, in a downward capacity and back up again. It has a. It, it wants to straighten out. It wants to straighten out. It wants to pull back to a point, pull, trying to straighten back up. But um, that's not possible because of the dead loads pulling it down. If this was, if you had more post tensioning in here, possibly it wouldn't def have deflected at all. So when they did this model, I just find it, so let's talk about the engineering failure. When they did the modeling of it, they thought that they could do this one stage here because Denny Pape believed that the deck could support this load here all by itself. So you only needed to do one and two. And the other, well, well I believe Berger, they did, I couldn't find it in the report, Berger added the fourth one. I found nowhere in the report where Berger did an amendment saying add the fourth one. If you remember in the first plans we saw online, there are only three post-tensioned um, ports up here. And I did a video saying, wow, you think they'd put a fourth one there? And then next thing you know, when the plans got released again, updated, and by then those plans were de deleted, the first set, um, that those were, uh, they added the fourth one. Nobody spoke of who added the fourth one. I couldn't find it on the F dot. I couldn't find it on the Berger. 
nor Danny Pate's uh, Figs, Figs uh, calculations adding this fourth one, but it appears. So what would happen if they would have just only increased, added the third one instead of one, two, and three? Maybe that this deflection wouldn't have happened at all because it would have made this strong back, this, this strong back here much stronger and, and helped with the deflection of the deck. But this deck theoretically should have taken all the forces, period. With that, in, with that, with that in mind, we go back to the eighth. What was the condition of the supports under here? The the transporters were coming in in two days. Uh, they were going to be put up there. I think the supports at this point, and I, I'm trying to verify it still, cross referencing, so you know where I'm going with this. Well, the supports, the, the uh, scaffolding was staging was removed from under here. And at that point, the, the deck exhibited what was, what that it couldn't hold itself, couldn't hold itself flat. And it torqued down. Why do we see the cracks here? Well, why not? This design puts all the loads down the center of the span. So the, 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 the weight of the canopy is coming down the center of the span and out to here out to here and a system whether they liked it or not appears to be have acted like a truss system um, now they use some magical shearing going on here where they're not just simply saying addressing where the bridge where it was reported sagging let's see if I can find sagging we'll see how long this video is I'm gonna terminate the video I'm not gonna uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably find you a screenshot and put it in the comments below so please look for the screenshots or if somebody finds it before me it would be in the uh, long reports that you'd have to rifle through again um, over here. And I forget where it is. There are one of the emails where they talk about sagging. If you open it up, I mean, it's, these are all the, all the stuff. And we got to find out. I'm going to find the sagging, and I'll put it down below. But hopefully you guys will, will start, seeing, um, start seeing what's going on here. It's just that sagging it was the beginning of the, of the failure. It's not, this is only a, a, a stage in the failure. This means nothing. Ultimately, this, this crack on the other side, it totally, it shows, it presents itself, and it presents itself more so in, the, uh, in, this, in these reports, I believe. Um, so this is on the day of the move. After they move, the transporters are no longer in place, and on the 16th, it present, they detention, and this is what I'm talking about. The uh, it no longer had the tie ends, the ends number eleven and twelve no longer acting like ties. Now I, I did a theoretical comment about that over a year ago. What if they're not acting as ties and you release it now? The, now the thing would sag in the middle. And what if that's how it's you know, like a tie back bridge? And of course, a lot of engineers and the other groups and all called me all types of names and, and nut jobs, but it's okay because they're uh. They're all stuck in the same thing as group think, and I showed you what group think looks like, and they're scared. Engineers are scared to speak up. Most of them aren't born. They're, they're made. And no offense to my engineers out there who made themselves. Some of you are pretty intelligent. I mean, you are, you are intelligent, but you still need to be able to think besides your limited, your limited resources is, is, is only, it doesn't, it? your limited resources are what they are. So please, you know, open open your minds here. People that aren't engineers can open their mind more so. Uh, this split is just falling. This is probably just push that. We'll spall that piece off. Uh, very interesting piece to spall off, but I won't go crazy about that with you. The uh, Then this is just smoke and mirrors image, imaging about before we get to the collapse. Um, it, just the timeline of the detensioning. So that, oh, okay, I can use the bridge right there. So when you remove these these uh, end anchors here and here, making that tie back bridge I uh, talked about, you just lost your your main tie backs. The ties are back in here. So now the tie back is here, and and here, this being this doesn't exhibit the cracking as this one, um, because we have more concrete, more steel, tons of more steel here interacting, and the deck goes fully out, engrossing the column. This does not. So this is why we get more of an issue down here than here. But yet crack presents, cracks present themselves here, as we know down here in the chamfer. Number two presents um, itself also with the cracks. Uh, and let's see if they have it in here. 
Number two also so it shows that it's equally on opposite ends, um, opening up that, that they added on, scabbed on chamfer. And how do you open those two ends up? Either you're going to have to have that sliding going on, that shear going on to get that opening, or you have the deck cowering down. And I like cowering down, sagging would be the correct word, but I like cowering down. I'm going to keep using it for now. Cowering down, and that would get you your opening here, and and, uh, and sagging is presented. Which comes to my very first video I did. I said, wow, you know, if I didn't have, before we had the photographs, the video, it had a bunch of breaks on the ground. And I said, wow, first off, I got to talk about mid-span. The dead loads on mid-span caused this. And that's what the first thing I talked about, mid-span failure, dead load. But everybody got caught up in the detail here, over here, and not both of them together, not all of the details. That they only looked at one detail, and they said, this is the, this is the cause, post hoc. I find that it's infuriating to me when, when, you, when we suffer from post hoc. It's because of one thing, it, it causes the other, period. And so, uh, you know, and... and, and you know, the, uh, the OSHA guy has a PhD. Uh, hey, and a couple other people have PhDs that play with this, and I expect PhDs to be superior in their knowledge, but they're, they're, they're limited to post hoc problem. If you get caught in the post hoc, you see one thing, it's related. You know, the doorbell rings and you hear knocking at the door. I mean, the uh, doorbell rings and you hear your phone ringing at the same time. So what are you going to say? The person at the door is also calling you on the phone? Well, maybe not, but maybe so. But you you just don't tie them together. My cat just meowed me. I can tie that together. When he meows me, I know he wants me to rub him. He gets in my face a little bit, by my arm rather. And if I don't rub him, well, he'll nudge it like a dog. Um, so give me a second, George. I want to scroll down to the bottom here to make sure this is clear. Sorry about your eyes. Bear with me. You know what? I'm going to stop. Pause the video. And I'm gonna, uh, I gotta terminate. I'm gonna stop this video, and I'll just have to do another one. Um, you know, you can find that there, there, there's uh, down on the end here. It also has the, the, the failure the presenting itself. Each, each end has the chamfer opening up. Oh man, I hate to do it. I hate to make the video longer. Is what I was saying when I say hate to do it. Here it is. Here, I come right up, just right from there, and we start looking. That's that twist torsion action. That these the guy with a PhD says that this is pushing this off. That these cracks are a result of of uh, interface shear. Now let's say that it's detensioned at this point and this cracks present. So you say, well, the interface shear doesn't start until they tension it. Well, why would it start until they tension it? If this is acting like a truss system and it's pushing off, uh, why would it? You know, that, that failure just happens because they went back into this thing with all those thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds of force with a steel plate. You just caused this to just fail. Look, it's already failed. You just caught, you just finished it off. It's already dissected. Look, the bottom of this is already dissected. And then you put 600,000 pounds of shear force in it. Of When I say shear, like a wedge force of the bar in there. I mean, of course, it's just going to finish it off. There's nothing to finish off. It's already crippled. I mean, I mean, really crippled. Right there. That's that. Does that look open to you? Anybody with a PhD, can you please confirm that this is open or closed? Does this look open to you? And it goes around open. Does this look like it's in plane or does this look like it's rotated? Okay, it's rotated. Now, here it is again. There it is. It's taking a torque. And that's going to explain itself on the other side too. It's torquing. The top is torquing, though, and it's taking taking this with it to a degree. Remember, it's lifting up. This is lifting up. So this would explain why some would spall off as this lift up. It's got some, it's like a veneer on this, too. So it's not, you're not looking, we're not actually looking at the a, a, a spalling of, uh, of the actual sub base. We're looking at, I think, uh, a veneer is put on top of here uh, that, that they use to hide the chamfer. At one point, when they when they flashed this all over, see the uh, whitewash as someone I love someone called it whitewash, old school. This chamfer is added secondarily um, after they did this, and that's in the form work as I talked about. This is we looking from the top on the other side of that from that side, 
and we look down and you can see clearly into the the rotation is taking place of this number 11 and that's that crack system over here this is after detensioning this is all crippled and now uh, these experts all of the experts are saying now when you post tension this member here is capable of pushing off this member yet I just showed you it's fully dissected from this side to this side fully dissected they're saying it has the ability to slide off, slide this off. We see what's left in real life is only about this much of it, which is all beyond this. So when it forces, we're trying to compress it, maybe this bottom pushing into that, it smashed this all apart. It destroyed it, you know, as it as it was doing its thing. And then I said it to support my liftoff theory. If you look at the rebar on the OSHA report, it's all standing proud, standing up, not sliding bent over. It's standing straight up. This is that chamfer that was added. I said, if you guys get in that other image I put up there, I said, look, you can see this flat stone. So they butted it up against the, that material, to, and it, it was over here. And it's showing that once you butt it up there and put paste around it as, you, as you're compressing it, it's um, you get a flat stone like that, a flat profile. They put a little vibration on it. And there's so this chamfer is indicating of the floor. These are not together. It, it doesn't indicate it. These two are doing two different shear movements across from each other, it indicates that the center span is cowering down, sagging down, and this is where we get our separation. This double break, you would say, well, if you break this one first, you can't break that one. So clearly, when this broke down, that rebar we saw that they cut away from the OSHA report, that in the OSHA report you see removed, um, so that's very important that I show you that. In the OSHA report, you see that removed. And and yet they present and they present photo they have photographs of it not removed, but they present photograph of removed and they say it's even sheared. So you look at the image of that one, right? That's a nicer, better image. This indicates it cowering down, breaking apart, and it's rebar in there. Um, and there's the other side. It's gotten appears to have gotten even worse on the tw on the thirteenth. Um, there's my elevation proof again, and this and you can see how it's hinging. It's only, what, uh, three-eighths of an inch there, and it's all the way out to three-quarter on the other end. Um, so this is the mid-span failure based on the longitudinal cables. I talked about that before, not having enough. This is an engineering failure based on longitudinal um, cables not being strong enough to support the deck and the canopy above. That the sagging is number one to this failure. Think about it. No sagging, no failure. No sagging, no failure. So um, there is where that probably where the split goes up to there, where it resolved itself during that twist. And it's just nothing. It's nothing there. Just this part right here, we blast it through. Probably probably interact it with each other just for a moment, or maybe not, because most of that rebar is in good shape. But they, they do a great job of giving you a blurred image or not clear at that detail up front. Clear clearing it, making giving us a clear detail. Here they present this image, and I don't see the rebar. They cleaned all this off. I don't see that stirrup here, but it's it's here in front of us, apparently in front of us, but yet I, I, I don't see it. I have asked for a FOIA request for this, for the photographs, the real photographs. We should be able to see it. Here they, they, they take this photograph. They take a closer photograph. And then they take a photograph like this. Now they say this is lower post sheared. The the uh, Denny Page report from his engineer stated it was the torch burned off with a torch. Uh, burning it off with a torch could call this spalling also. This this uh this cracking the heat from a torch uh, can cause some uh, separation. Well, it will. It'll pop some concrete. If you guys ever weld on concrete or done anything on concrete with a torch, you know that concrete will, will with the water content in it will pop and could pop a rock right in your face. This also proves no shearing because it didn't move, it didn't slide. It's supposed to have slid, 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 oh, slid. Um, these are upright; they're not pushed away towards us, and yet this concrete was able to push towards us. But the rebar being inside the concrete was able to stay where it was. Um, yeah, they don't talk about that, how they don't hit the details because because you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. They did. They talk about pushing it through 
all this this concrete. Talk about how you push push through this steel concrete through the, all this steel. How do you push through it and it stays in the position it is? Because they said it pushed it off. Hey, sorry, George. Let me put you over here. All right, let me get you the image of. Uh, if they have one more top image down. Top image down. Zoom out. So they're saying that when they do this, they remove these two post-tension bars. They don't exist in their formulas. Not the NTSB formula, not the OS, OSB, not the OSHA OSHA report. Um, that when, they, when this 11, so this chamfer is added. This is an add-on, as I think. So it really comes down to here. Your surface is here to all the way across this deck because this deck was built and one pour, supposedly one pour, and then these two were built afterwards, and then obviously the chamfer was added lastly, as apparently to me. Um, this, they said, all sheared off. These bars sheared off. Yet we're looking at a bar present. So it doesn't fit their narrative, so they just say, hey, sheared off. They don't talk about that one that didn't shear off. Because they would have to address the detail of that. Why didn't it shear off? Well, the chamfer was done secondly, secondarily. And then you go, wait a minute. Does that allow for the chamfer to be done secondarily? Because it says deck and then uprights. It doesn't say deck, upright, then chamfers. Um, chamfers are very important, as I did in a video, showed you, guys, showed you guys in a video about the concrete truss structures that they tested and the United Emirates study. And the chamfer is what saved the, bridge, the, the cracks from presenting. Um, this doesn't appear to chamfer save, save it. It's just the span was too great uh, for the only only bit of steel in there to keep the thing from deflexing was the post tensioning, and that was on the deck and the strong back of the canopy, which would translate the loads down to uh, the diaphragm. But I'm stating that the that the diaphragm loads were not transferring down number twelve. And possibly not down number one, but not down number 12, because when you detention it, it raises up in the air. So whatever, all be whatever you think about the post-tensioning in, in the canopy. It, it, uh, and how I said it transfers the loads down 12 to some degree. I have to say that maybe it did, but when its bridge starts sagging, that connection of uh, 12 in the canopy results in it lifting up, as you see here. And this is why you get an open crack. If it was sliding off, why would you get an open crack like this? Why would you not see some crushing going past, some sheer, some sheer crushing or bypassing each other? It's a crack now. So if this is pushing it off, why is it not bypassing? Why would this crack develop like this at all? If it's pushing back there, it would just be pushing it all off. And if it was pushing, off, pushing it off from the, from the back end over here, this would be more open here and once you got a crack. And I start pushing these two pieces, if I push, push back at the back end, would it not open this, open it crack up? Um, so in other words, if I push right here, this is going to open this up out to this direction. My force is coming this direction. has no choice but to push that outward in that direction because this is pinned. It would rotate um, if I don't want to confuse you with that. Um, so again, um, I'm clearly at the sagging of the deck. I find it uh, disgusting that... NTSB um, and their two engineers came to this conclusion along with along with the Fairbanks, Alaska. I find them all disgusting with their with their with their statements. Here's the flat stone I was talking about. I don't think it was sheared or anything else. I think this is just a chamfer added on, and then they paste over it. Um, because again, you can find the form work. Here's the scissors that indicates lifting up, not shearing or bypassing. Um, you would have the shearing of concrete to two, two, two rocks together is what you're mounting to, right? And it would it would create a, a powder or dust or a, a, a residue. Uh, some something would be left beyond here, and we're looking at clear white here. And I don't see what he did. Blow it off with his mouth first. This is already supposed to be sliding, supposedly, in in, the, in OSHA and also. Um, well, everybody who thinks it's sliding, it would, uh, you, should already, you already should be presenting itself as sliding. And how are we so lucky not to see uh, any, any, any sliding effect? 
not until the failure, of course, then they're interacting with each other. Um, this again is that opening and rising up. They don't show it. This angle they show is just so weird that they uh, do that. Scissors on this end, opening there. I mean, just looking at this 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 crappy craftsmanship, you know, this I think it's by the pipe. I saw something chunky like that. But remember, this is a uh, formwork, and this would be the long, long furthest part down the formwork. And I don't know how they placed the concrete because that seemed like a pretty long drop. Of concrete to get to the bottom of that uh that column um, for just dropping concrete. I don't know if they had, I don't know how they did that. Um, so 